In a world of oddity, meet the Linux family with six digits on their hands and seven on their toes. A family that has accepted and appreciated polydactyly as a normalcy, rather as a mischance. Join me, Jai Wangwe, as I venture you into the world of polydactyly family. Lynette explains how she ended in this condition. I consulted one of the counselors from Ampath, Jen Arona, explains the condition. When you look at the condition, it is something that comes from a certain um, either it's what the causes of this kind of condition or impairment is mostly um, hereditary um, you'll find that in the lineage of um, in the lin in the family lineage you'll find that if a patient has this condition probably somebody in the family also had the same so it is hereditary Polydactility. This is a condition where a person has uh, more than five fingers or toes. The counselor explains the condition whether it is a disease or impairment. The name poly is a Greek word meaning numerous or many. And uh, dactyli is a, a Greek term for fingers or, or digits. So when you combine those two, poly and dactyli, is a, you, it, it comes, uh, it brings the meaning of uh, numerous fingers or numerous uh, toes. Uh, it's a, a physical impairment. Was also able to ask a doctor if it is hereditary. The genes in both parents interfere with the, the normal way the structures or parts of the body are supposed to develop. Every one of us has a genetic code which we call the DNA. And the DNA, if you look at it, is a genetic material. And that genetic material has strands. So every portion of the DNA is responsible for specific characteristics of how the body develops. The normal height is there. Then we have the less than normal and then the more than normal. So if in every couple we have, we are supposed to have um, some characteristics have a recessive and a dominant. So the mother can have a recessive and a dominant. Then the father has both genes dominant. In that case, that means we have out of the four portions, we have two which are dominant from the father and one from the mother. They become three. Now, when these genes cross each other because of uh, reproduction. That means out of four offsprings, three of those offsprings will develop the characteristics of the dominant gene. So that means now we have three out of four that these children will manifest a characteristic that is more or less of the father. 
now so that means out of four there is a chance that three out of those four will be with a dominant gene and one will have a recessive gene and a dominant gene like the mother now in this case it appears like since the number of children out of seven to a normal he also explained the possible causes for the condition. The condition can be caused by a number of things, but um, just to be to narrow down on the specifics, uh, this is an area where the genes in both parents interfere with the the normal way the structures or parts of the body are supposed to develop. Lynette goes on explaining to us the challenges that she faces. Counselor Jen also explained the reasons as to why they could come across those challenges and also explained the challenges that people with polydactyly face. Uh, when somebody grows with this uh, condition to adulthood, they might experience uh, difficulty because depending on their social circumstances, uh, they might not be able to afford this kind of uh, medication or treatment that would help them to cope in their daily um, lives or their daily living. And this is where uh, rejection comes in or uh, societal stigmatization or you find that they cannot cope well with the society or even themselves they will have a problem because they will start identifying and looking around and figuring out that they are different from other people or other kids that are growing with them. So that is where the challenge comes in with this condition of polydactyly. So as a person with this condition or as a person living with uh, polydactyly, um, rejection comes in in various ways. And uh, one may experience rejection in the physical environment. Uh, you can find that the physical environment is not suitable for you to function in your daily, um, for you to, to partake of your daily functions. So the physical environment will be, especially for people with impairments and uh, disability, you'll find that the society is structured in a certain way that does not accommodate everybody and it does not accommodate everybody with impairments such as polydactyly. So you'll find that in your physical environment there are objects or tools or things that become a problem. For example, even handling as something as simple as a pen when a child like this is in school can be a problem because the regular child will just hold a pen normally but uh, a child that has polydactyly will struggle to use something like a pen so you will find that in the physical environment there are no structures that are uh, probably modified to suit these kind of conditions Dr. Wanakacha was able to explain if the condition is treatable. Corrective surgery can be done. There are those that may be done even below here, depending on the type of condition, because we have specialties we call the occupational therapists. Once a child is done, if the leg is tilting this way and it's supposed to go straight, at this age, that is the best time to go, so that they have certain kind of uh, appendages uh, fitted on the uh, for example legs and also after the child is born for example it can extra digit there is a way they can surgically tie an extra digit and deny blood supply and 
food that abandoned. So eventually it just falls off because there is no food, there is no oxygen, so it just dies. But for those who have reached here, now you can't use that method. What you do is now you just go to theater, you cut a few an amputation of that instead of it and then you seal it properly in a cosmetic way and then now you rehabilitate that person so that if he was walking in a particular way now he has to walk in a normal way without the extended it it is a shoe whatever it is the cancer also exposes the body to its on how we can live with these people affected with polydactyly condition and those who are affected with the condition can overcome the challenge. First point of uh, healing, we always say is acceptance. Before you heal, before you go to the point where you are okay, you are whole as a person, you have to accept the nature and you have to embrace yourself um, as you are. So when you accept yourself, when you are this person or this child or um, even uh, the, the people that have this condition of polydactyly, or when you accept yourself that this is who you are and this is a medical condition that you did not impose in yourself, then that is the first point of healing. So it is good to have that courage to accept yourself as you are and uh, to know that this is who you are and you did not choose this even be a bad thing when you are able to accept it if somebody rejects you you should be able to know that this person is rejecting me probably because they do not know that this is a medical condition or they are naive and they have never seen such a thing so when you are actually expecting that rejection, when somebody rejects you, it becomes easier to deal with it because you are already expecting it. So when you are expecting to be rejected, then you will have the right coping mechanisms. You will know how to self-assure yourself. You will know how to approach these people in a kind manner. You will know how to give them a feedback that is appropriate to them because you'll find that somebody rejects you out of the point of ignorance somebody can reject you out of the point of naivety somebody can reject you out of the point of they also are suffering in their way and they are projecting that to you so when you know this that rejection might happen to you especially when you are put in a new environment for example if you are a school going child with this condition and the school environment is totally new be mentally prepared that some children are going to laugh at you but when you know that they are going to laugh at you you will also know that they will laugh at you because they do not know that this thing is a medical condition and it can affect anybody so you'll find that when you are prepared that these people are going to act in a certain way then it will give you that mental stability to also reassure yourself and affirm yourself and also be able to give these people a positive feedback because when they reject you and you are aware that they are going to do this to you, you can even offer them the education, you can even offer them the information that they lack because so many people in the society do not have this knowledge. Sasa mimi watoto hata wakiniambia na wambianga tu hii ni maombele ya Mungu na Mungu ana sababu mbona kaunga hivyo. Maana mimi ni mwanadamu kama sasa ningependa kuambia wengine sisi ni wanadamu tusitenge. Maana Mungu mwenye aliwaumba ndiye alipoumba. The big question is, do our government really care about those people living with polydactyly condition? Are they getting support the same way the disabled get? So I hope that we have to deal with this family. We have to deal with this family. We have to deal with this family. 
ni familia ina mtaji msaada katika hali ya kutengwa katika hali mama anaka katika ukweke anaka katika hali ya kutengwa watoto wana hata wanashindwa kucheza na wenzao sababu wanatengwa na wanacheka tunaomba Musa saidi zetu wote ambao nazaona condition kama hii asimamie hivyo asaidie mama These are questions that Linet and other living with a condition are waiting for answers on today's medical impairment on Wangwe Jail.